Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm trying to get over having a little bit of a panic attack of like being on virtual learning again. Ah, okay. But it's nice to get a morning off for my students, not gonna lie to y'all. Um, but um, let me uh, give some folks some time to, to come in um, before I get started on the real thing. Um, so what y'all could be doing while you're filtering in, um, and always stop me, I babble, um, and my students know that. Um, and so you're always allowed to stop me and say, Miss D, you're going too fast. And I also talk about myself in third person a lot. Um, but I'm going to take you through a module that I created to try to uh, incorporate and in, uh, sewing into an engineering career technical ed class at a high school level. Um, we're probably not going to be able to sew anything today <laughs> unless you're like got a sewing kit right next to you, which most people don't. Um, but I'll at least give you a bunch of things you can go try, and I would love to hear how it went. Um, and uh, I'm going to treat you some, just like my students a little bit. And I did actually do some sewing projects um, during distance learning, so I have tried some of this stuff. Unfortunately, I can't get my leg. I was going to try to do some demos. I couldn't get my head hand cam going. So while folks are filtering in, welcome. Um, here is typically what I do is I do, you know, old school format. I do do now when you get there. Um, I have the students come in. I'm lucky enough to be in an adapted chemistry lab that is now a makerspace classroom um, that every student has a MacBook Air that they're assigned. Um, so the students pick them up and we use Canvas as a platform. Um, even when I'm doing things like these hands-on projects um, because we do digital documentation. So typically I have students come in and say, get out your laptop, be ready and present for class. So, um, and because I don't know all y'all um, and I can see some of y'all's beautiful faces. Um, Chris, I am loving your picture. Um, and, <laughs> um, but typically like I get them started in a new group um, and I start calling them sewing circles. So you all are my sewing circle today. So if you could put in the chat, introduce yourself a little bit. Um, and pick one prompt question um, and put that in the chat for me, right? Um, that would be great to let others know where you're at um, and you get to choose which of these. And just so folks know too, um, this is what I typically do in the classroom is I actually have scraps of paper, of fabric of a certain color. And I strategically, you know, give the kid, I know the groups I want the students to be in. So I would give them a color so we would get some even teams, um, but I can't do that with you right now. But um, so ignore the first two bullets. But if y'all could give me in the chat uh, your name, where you're from, where you're teaching, and then one of these. I've never seen a sewn project before. Oh, I've never sewn before, but I'm interested in a blank or making a blank project. I learned to sew from my cases. I learned to sew from my mother when I was. Ugh, my whole life, but really when I was 12, um, in order to be her daughter. No, <laughs> um, she taught me, I think my first project was a skirt. And then some other options are, I think sewing is useful skill because of blank. And my biggest question about sewing is blank. I'll give folks a few moments. Hi, Lori. I'm also going to say that, man, I miss I was a big part of Maker Ed and um, Maker Fair, and I miss all y'all. I miss being a, <laughs> in the community with y'all. So great. Um, anybody want to try to answer the prompt in the chat? Um, oh, also, what I typically do, I'm going to be a little flighty. Um, what I typically do as well. Um, is I'm pretty open with my slides. I actually, most of the time, sometimes the kids abuse the privilege, but I open up my slides and we work on them together. Um, so I'll put this in, can I do that? Or is it gonna, eh. I'll put the link, um, but come meet me in these slides. Um, cushion cover you still have it actually that's true in middle school I made a teddy bear and man that teddy bear was ugly um so no I don't have that teddy bear even my mom got rid of that teddy bear 
she was ashamed with me. But yeah, if you're just getting here, I'm giving us a little bit of folks, uh, a little bit of time. Um, And it would help me, Leslie, just what time are we supposed to end? Do you know? Sorry, 2.55. 2.55. Okay. So in my time, that's 11.55. (laughs) Because I am in California. Um, so I like, just like in school, I'm going to give myself a timer. Okay. So we have 35 minutes together. Lovely. Okay. So yes, uh, made a cushion cover. Anybody else want to share? So just so I know where you're at with sewing in the chat, one of these prompts or even just, you know, I've never sewn before. I'm, I'm nervous or man, I have, but I don't know how to connect it to engineering. Anything like that would kind of help me know where you guys are at. Um, and for folks that are just getting here, I'll put it one more time in the chat. Come meet me in these slides. They link to everything I'm going to talk about today. Never sewn. Okay, Fascio. I'll take that challenge. Um, yeah, I hadn't actually, thanks Nuno for bringing that up. Um, Cause I didn't actually like, I wish I was actually in my classroom, but my kids are in my classroom right now. <laughs> but um, about how I set up the sewing machine thing, I actually have a cart, which I made. Um, and we have six sewing machines for a class of usually like 20 people. Um, I do both sewing by hand and sewing machine. It's ambitious. It's it, This year it ended up being about a four week module because of holidays kind of sticking in the middle of it. But I try to keep my module from three, between two to four weeks. Okay, anybody else? You can always unmute too. I really miss voices as well. Um, and adult voices that don't yell at me like my high school students. Wink, wink. Okay. So what yell. are we going to talk about today? Hi. <laughs> if you want us to yell at you, I'm sure we can figure out how. Oh, yeah. Miss, you know. miss, miss. Miss D, Miss D, Miss D. Never get a name that's so easy to say. Um, okay, well, if you're just joining us, but yeah, here's a, here's my ambitious agenda um, about all the things I want to cover with you guys about how I try to integrate sewing into an engineering class. Um and uh, I'll tell a little bit about me, why I do it. Um, when I say objectives and flow, I mean like what I you know say to the students and what I say to teachers as well. And then I'll pre I'll show you guys. There's actually a link in these slides to all of my slides from this year. Um, but some of them won't make sense because some of it's driven by like what I post on our content management system Canvas. Um, but you'll get from these slides, some examples of when we do things hands-on and how I try to integrate some critical thinking and discussion. Some examples of my assessment tools. Um, And then I'd really love to hear if any of y'all are doing sewing because I'm always open. And actually I'm taking a community college class in sewing, this is my kit. Oh, and also if you can see, this is my cat, Um, Oreo. (laughs) She's happy I'm home today, Um, but yes. I'm still learning. Um, great. Okay. Keep going, Miss D, because now you got 32 minutes. Okay. This is me, but this is really me. Okay. And um, this is actually the slide I work uh, right now. I'm a high school career technical ed teacher um, in a pathway of engineering. Um, my fifth year teaching, my first year teaching, I taught in our middle school in East Palo Alto. Um, then I moved up to um, East Palo Alto Academy. And we are a funky little place. Uh, we're 350 students um, and total, which is small for California. Um, and it's the first time that there's been an elective class like this or any sort of CTE, career technical ed, um, in our classroom. But um, we do a practice. This is every year we do about me slides. And so this is the one from this year. And I think the preface of this, as I said, you know, if this slide is overwhelming, for you, I'm probably gonna be overwhelming for you. Um, but just really short, who I am is, you know, my background is not actually education. Um, I don't have an education degree. Um, I've never taken an engineering class. Um, but <laughs> I got uh, certified, I've been doing maker ed in informal education for 
years, many years, it'll age me. Um, that picture in the middle there is one of my first groups of leadership groups when I worked at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston at an Intel Computer Clubhouse. Um, and then over the years, I've had a very long journey that took me through the Maker's Fair, through Fat. I worked for Fat Foundation for a little while. Um, I worked, uh, I did work internationally. Um, and I wrote a book in, or I co-wrote a book uh, with a bunch of different people funded by Intel um, called Start Making. Um, and took a lot of kids uh, to maker fairs. So you kind of see that there. Um, but why I sort of left these family pictures, this is my, you know, a family and this is why I moved to California is because when your little brother makes beautiful children, um, you everybody comes. Um, but you can kind of see there's my mom right there in the middle um, with her white hair. Um, and she's the origin of this. Um, and there's actually like a family history of many people in my family sewing as part of, um, you know, being stay at home mothers, but also working in factories, both in um, French Canada and in uh, Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Um, so, you know, it's in my blood, um, but, you know, it is, it is something that, you know, I've been struggling with as a maker person um, about how to integrate it in here, because if you, this is my why right here, and I, I'm hoping maybe y'all are onto this too, is that, um, you know, sometimes, especially in engineering education, um, the A in STEAM, you know, and the, you know, craftsmanship of things like this are, you know, kind of like, oh, that's nice, but it's not real engineering. And I think we got really lucky uh, as a maker movement during pandemic and other, you know, in response. And so this was like a very clear moment where, you know what? you know, we're solving problems. Everybody's, you know, engineers solve problems, make yourself problems. Why can't we all, you know, why can't the tools that everybody uses be equally as uh, significant and useful? Um, so that's where I'm at. So this is me making my little icon into a bulldog, which is our school's um, icon there. Um, so the essential question of the whole module that I do. Um, so I teach a, I teach a bunch of different classes, but right now I teach a uh, beginning class called Making is Engineering um, that tries to get a lot of our students who, if you know anything about East Palo Alto, um, Dangerous Minds was was geared off of that, that movie with Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, our students have not always had a friendly relationship with STEM and engineering. Um, we do have a great history of makerspaces being in, um, partly uh, through the work of Stanford and Fablern um, in our K through eight district. Um, but by the time they get to high school, I have I, I very rarely meet a student that says I want to be an engineer, or I think I can be an engineer. Um, so this class and this unit particularly is about taking something that is valid, both in their heads and in their communities as something that it's a skill, and it's a technical skill, um, but that it also solves problems. Um, so my lesson is uh, how might learn by sewing? Uh, how might we learn by sewing to investigate how makers engineer functional objects? Uh, and again, stop me if I'm babbling, okay? Um, this is all the teachery. I literally copied and pasted this here. There's a, li a linked lesson plan that I wrote um, for parts of this lesson in like a more formal format. Um, but I'm not gonna linger on it because this is more of I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm doing more action. Um, so really, my goals with this um, is trying to use an accessible tool like a sewing machine and hand sewing to go through some of the same things you would with other digital fabrication tools and engineering tools. So you would learn basic techniques. Um, you would document you know, and try something uh, from the basics of those from a template. And then even if we could go a little further, like adapting that template uh, in then trying to solve uh, a real problem. So this was one from a couple years ago, actually from the pandemic of actually sent home kits of the kids trying to make their own masks. Um, and or as I do a lot of times with these, is the end of it, they can always propose some other version of solving that problem. And so just to give you an example, this year I adapted it because the masks are kind of question mark. 
Um, but we adapted it to be a little bit more about uh, what the kids are at. And so I actually did their end of the semester uh, final was creating a toolbox for one specific person. And that toolbox could be made from sewn materials and using their sewing. Um, so we had some really great uh, adaptions of backpacks and toolkits and you know them applying those skills. So they really uh, did that, yes. Uh, so let me see, keeping an eye on the time. Um, if you're curious, um, we do standard-based learning. This is a little bit of how I hide, uh, and I'll say hi to you guys, but I kind of mask the learning, the standards from the CTE California into things that the kids really understand. Um, and so I'll often say that their learning masteries are their actions in the makerspace. And, and so this one is really about being safe and patient. It really is a great module to teach safety. Um, in a way, especially because sewing machines, they can be nuts. And I would love actually for to hear from you guys. Um, I'm in this community college class, and they are not they are not allowed to give us scissors because they said they're weapon. Um, and I thought about my classroom, my makerspace classroom, where you know I've got a heat gun and I got a laser cutter, and I'm like at the community college, they're afraid to give adults scissors. Um, so it's like, am I taking my life? I'm, no, but but just sort of having that perspective about where people like that common tool is, that's where we're at. It bums me out. Um, <laughs> so um, let's get to the hands-on stuff, okay? Uh, and stop me again if you need me to. Um, so one thing I typically would do is I have, and I think if I did it right, yeah, there's a picture, okay? Um, especially most of the students in my class are freshmen and they love to fidget. And this is like their dream fidget kit right here, but danger. Um, so some of this is about like learning how to organize and the right tool for the right time. Um, and some of it is about like how to not, you know, just create a very big thing that's, you know, junk because you're just messing with the materials before you make a project. So I would start, uh, you know, an active thing we do um, my work with high schoolers, so they're, um, most of the folks in this class are, you know, 14 to 16. Um, I do have a few older classmen that get, you know, in there, but, um, but yeah. Um, and so going back to this tool hunt, I will give them, you know, the, the tools, and then they have to start learning the vocabulary. Um, and I don't know if folks know about constructing meaning, but, you know, at our class, at our our population is very high. You know, English as a second language. Um, in fact, you know, quite a few in my classes um, are only Spanish language. Um, so we have a task of really trying to encourage like word literacy um, and learning technical tools um, in English and Spanish. So a lot of my materials are in English and Spanish as well. Um, but something like this, so they can really start. I tell them, I want you to use the fancy words so you sound you know, super smart, but so that they actually start to know, you know, technical terms to go with like shears, um, to know that that's a pair of scissors that does something different than a paper pair of scissors um, that they're used to. Um, so as a group, I wish I could do this with y'all right now, um, but as a group, I get them all, um, I give them this kit and then they spend a little bit and I give them like a little piece of paper and they try to identify them. Um, and then I do a debrief like this on a whiteboard where I say, what did you guys call it? This is what the fancy people call it. Um, and this is its purpose in life um, and what it does. Um, and uh, what I really like about this is 99% of the time, there's like a few students that have done it and can kind of be the experts in their teams. And I think that's a big part of this as well is validating um, that knowledge, especially because a lot of it comes from working with their families, um, you know, with, and I've had both, both male and female, but like grandmothers that taught them how to sew or mothers that taught them how to sew um, and saying, hey, they're doing a technical thing by knowing all these terms and, and knowing when to use the right pins and the right threads um, and having different ways to solve a problem, like embroidering something versus 
doing just like a running stitch that's more constructive. Questions, I'm talking a lot and I'm realizing this is not as interactive as I hoped it would be, but <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so that's hands-on activity number one. Um, number two is something I've come to really love is that their first project is an ugly monster. Um, and the essential question is how might we learn to hand sew um, and then turn our first attempts into beautiful failures slash monster toys. Um, and in this case, the activity, oh, oh, I didn't put the thing in there, but um, what I'll do is give them like scraps of felt and some templates, but I'll say you could try to, you know, if you're a little nervous about curves, you know, use this easy one here um, on the right, the blue one, um, or, you know, try this other thing. Um, and I'll say, you know, I'll have a series of slides and maybe that would be helpful for y'all to see. Uh, of course, I'd like to it. But um, I do do some demos in class of how to do the basics, like how to cut, you know, how to use the scissors, how to do a stitch. Um, but a lot of times it filters off very quickly. And some of those I also like provide like little videos that they can play on their own just in time at the table. Um, but, you know, this, especially like trying to like, cause a lot of we either have like, they don't want to try it cause they don't want it to be ugly or they've never done it before. And I'm like, if it's a project that they really cared about, they don't want to ruin it. And I'm like, no, the whole point is to make it ugly um, and to really show me your stitches and show me, you know, like Frankenstein that you got better at it the more you tried it. Like around, when you get around the edge, you know, that your your stitch got better. Uh, so that's that project. And then typically in the progression, um, the next thing they would do is, and I have a link to it later in the slides. I'm going to jump. You're going to experience just like one of my students, what it's like. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, yeah. So the next step would be them doing a more formative skills-based thing of a hand sewing challenge. Um, and if you're in the Google Docs, it's on, if you're in my slides, it's on slide 24 if you want to make a copy. And I very much challenge you guys to go do this as soon as possible. Um, and it's not this one, Misty, it's this one. Okay. Um, and again, stop me if you're not seeing anything. Um, but basically, uh, I would give them, I say, make a copy of this Google Doc. Um, and I teach them how to use the uh, camera to as a documentation tool. And then I say, you are going to make three shapes. And you're going to show me three different stitches and the basics of sewing. And by the end, and take pictures as you go along with this process. Um, yes, I can always share the link to the slides. Um, it is here. Um, and this that I'm looking at here, this hand sewing challenge is on slide 24 linked there. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I like almost none of my stuff is original. So I use the Instructables hand sewing class, it's great. Um, and so what I prompt them to do here is to try it. And then if they need more uh, instructions, they can click here and this leads them to that step in the, uh, in the uh, Instructables. Um, and then I also have uh, some videos um, embedded on Canvas for them as well for each one of these small things. Um, but what I would say about this hand sewing challenge um, is that of all the things I do all year, this is probably the assignment that the most kids get in and finish. Um, and it's the one when people say like, you know, when's your Zen in your classroom? I will look up and every kid is sewing. In And that, you know, like how many times do you look up and every kid is, you know, or every student or every learner is trying what you're doing. That does not happen very often. <laughs> and, you know, boys, girls, old, young, um, especially with the monster going into this, um, typically at the end of this challenge, they either turn them into little pillows and they start giving them, 
you know, if they like the monster challenge, I'll give them some googly eyes. They start making them into characters. Um, or I give them beans and they make bean bags. Although if you're working with teenagers, please you know, don't just give out a big bin of beans because then you're finding beans all over your classroom for years to come. Um, but yes, okay. But going back to our objective of is sewing engineering, right? If we go back to, especially for y'all that was um, not here um, in this progression of things, right? An engineer, before they can, you know, pick up a new tool, and do anything, they have to know the technical skills, right? And a basic uh, process of how to do that. So most of the time, this is not the first module. I do a couple different modules where they learn the design cycle, like an engineer would. And they typically would do some cardboard prototyping around solving a problem in the space, like creating a, a hot glue gun that stands up. So, the hand sewing challenge, again, lands right here, is that we tried it, we understand the basics, the terms embedded in here usually is some discussion of materials. Um, what's the best material to use at the best time, both thread and fabric and how to tell the difference. Um, and then you really wanna get here where you're landing, where the students are like solving a problem, but they have all the skills, you know, in a comfortable way getting there. So, uh, any questions? I know this is starting to get like, you're like, Miss D, I'm about to zone out. Typically at this point in class, I'd give the kids a five minute break, or at least I'd say, stand up and stretch. So Takio, stretch for me, because you're like, yes, thank you, Mateo. Okay, Mateo, All right, I'll say it right. Um, so just to kind of, because we're getting close to the end. Ah, 15 minutes, holy crud, okay. Uh, uh, so the final project, just so you can kind of see it, um, is I, it's very important for me, for the students to have choice. Um, and especially this year, I changed the options and almost every year I change the options, but I give them something to start from. And some, you know, most of the kids made a pillow right here because it's the squarest thing you could ever make. Right. And they also just wanted pillows this year. Um, I had nobody make a scrunchie. And so about 50% of people made a pillow. A lot of people made this squish pillows are like the thing. Nobody made the knot bag, but a bunch of people made bags. They looked at that and said, it's too complicated, Miss D, and we found another pattern. Um, but this is where that design cycle comes through. And now I'm asking them to apply that um, and you know, show me that they learned the technical skills to apply to a problem. So typically I'd also say like, who even for the pillow, like who's it for? The shape of it's gonna sort of solve a different problem for different people. So I got this amazing neck pillow from a kid about the way he plays video games, this really long neck pillow. He thought about it. Um, and then also I had uh, some final projects that were smash mellows that um, performed things like hiding snacks from their siblings. That was one of my favorites. Um, somebody made a money bag wallet that looks like a smash mill <laughs> money bag that had like a secret pocket to put your money. That was, that was also one of my favorites. Um, and so to me, you know, this maker template, and I, I shared that with you guys on the slides as well. Um, this is typically, let me get a little bigger for you guys. I use almost the same template for all of my uh, things. This is too big, Misty. Um, and it's in English and Spanish, um, where I have them document their process, reflect on it, uh, give me some of their sources and their inspiration. Um, and I really do try to get them to do full sentences. And then I give them some prompts like I did for y'all in the beginning about how to reflect on the process about their strengths, their challenges, um, and what to do next time. Um, and we keep using this format over and over again. Um, and in some cases, I let them do it on paper because if, and they like sketching because I, I just want them to show their process as much as possible. I think I was in an earlier session um, about like, maybe I'm not as rigid as some of these engineering teachers. 
and that's a side conversation people want to have that um but but yes that's typically this is typically how i would do a summative assessment of, of what they're doing questions because now i want to get into some other and stuff that i think i actually might be able to make more interactive for y'all um i'm gonna get out of this view for now um and I see people in there with me. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then also, yeah, I threw these in here just so y'all would see uh, what it looks like, um, how I help them do project management and so, what it would look like in English and Spanish um, of, you know, how did you accomplish? What did you, you know, so they can manage their own work because typically with any sort of hand skill like this or technical skill, the kids are going to run at different um, speeds and, um you know, it, it kind of helps them know to know where I'm I'm hoping, but like to feel accomplished to check off the things that they did that day. So in the middle of this, and this is where I really I'm hoping to get some feedback from y'all is, you know, and, and how to make this more rigorous, because I was the one asking about that in the in the keynote. Um, is that uh is try to have, you know, trying to make a story about that they're learning this thing and it's fun making a little stuff monster. Um, but it is actually a skill that solves problems in the real world. Engineers use it all the time. Um, so the first part of that is I do a lot around vocabulary. Um, so there's a link in here. I use Quizlet. Um, and typically I'll actually also go offline and have the kids write down the words they don't know on a sticky. We do it physically in the space. And then I get those early books that are done to help, you know, type them up. And I put both my definitions and their definitions into these Quizlets and then we'll play the games and, and that's available in Quizlet, um, which especially for this about knowing the parts of the sewing machine um, is more fun uh, for the student. Um, so that's what that looks like when they play it. Um, I'll either play the game or they go against each other um, or they practice by just flipping the, the flashcards. Um, and then I also do uh, some discussions where they'll take a reading. So this is a great case. And yes, the readings here are linked. I'm always looking for better readings than this. Um, but most of these are blog posts by engineering students making an argument about uh, is sewing engineering. And I'll give them prompts like this because a lot of my folks, or my students are freshmen and they're really struggling with claims evidence. I'm not an ELA teacher, but um, they need some scaffolding. Um, and uh, these sentence frames really help them. So I'll do a canvas, which is our LMS, and I'll have that say read one. Sometimes I'll even print them out for some folks that are like, don't like reading on the screen. Um, and all these kind of go at this from different angles about why they became an engineer. Um, and then I follow it up with ed puzzles, which for some reason, I feel like I skipped over. Oh, yes, I did. Um, Ed Puzzles, if y'all don't know it, is a really great way to show a video, but have the kids really with you thinking about it as they go through it. So you embed questions. Um, and so in this case, I was I had COVID. <laughs> so I assigned a bunch of Ed Puzzles because um, I could not expect a sub to teach sewing. Um, and these kind of walked them through the argument I was trying to, to make around, you know, how does the sewing machine work? How was it an invention? So how did it, and then how did it change history? How did it make women be able, you know, more easily, very quickly become part of the workforce during the war? Or how did it change the way that clothes are made and create entire industries around fashion? Um, and then also how was it an amazing invention over time? And there's a lot of stories in there about, uh, you know, ownership of ideas and, and, you know, having an idea, but not being able to implement it. And so it kind of goes fallow. Um, these are like my super faves. So please, you know, click on these links um, outside of this session and, you know, let me know if you can't get to them. Um, but, you know, I find these are like really great, just, you know, discussion starters and, and how to get the kids thinking like I'm thinking instead of me standing up there in front of them and saying, of course, sewing is engineering. Um, and I embed these in the three to four weeks so they'd only do like one of these um, critical thinking and discussion uh, a week um, inside of what we're doing and make them stop sewing, which they hate um, and doing that. 
so great close to the end. Um, and I already really sort of talked about what I do for assessment. Um, so what I was hoping, I just like, I feel like I just like, like idea vomited quite a bit of stuff to y'all right now. Um, and it isn't in a maker way, like you didn't get to sew anything, but I'm hoping maybe you'll go try some of these things. Um, it, especially if you've never sewn before, cause you guys said that in the thing, um, because these are the tools that, um, you know, really resonate with my students and, and might with yours. Um, but wanted to leave some space here at the end for like, is anybody else doing sewing in an engineering or a makerspace class? Um, I know we have a big way, wide range of ages, um, but I think, you know, especially like I'm trying to solve the problem, of, you know, teaching high schoolers um, and, uh, you know, you can still make sewn, it's that sewn monster project, like, they still love it, even though it's really for like, <laughs> do it with younger kids with scissors that community colleges would, would let you um, give out to people. Um, but yes, meet me in slide 26. Um, if you don't want to unmute or ask me out here um, and links and anything in here um, that you've used maybe to, to make this argument um, would help me. Um, yes, I wish I could get to our anonymous narwhal. Um, I wish I could get to sewn circuits because I need to move on. Part of this class for me is like, I have to try to get through as many of the digital fabrication tools in the two semesters as possible. Um, and there's like two, this year I like handed the sewn circuits to a few kids that were ahead. Um, and they, you know, didn't, they're freshmen so they didn't want to look like nerds. So they didn't do it, but it, I think it's, yes, if you, if I could go from sewing to electrical engineering, it would be really great to do sewn circuits. Um, so we do have um, Alexandra and Miguel that have their hand raised. I think they want okay, to unmute cool. and speak. Yes, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Who's going to go first? Alexandra? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. We are, we work together, me and Miguel. That's why ah. we work at the Fab Lab in Portugal. And ah. I, I didn't get the beginning of your presentation, but... Mm -hmm. Is this a curricular activity is, or is it an extracurricular activity or uh, what do you, what do you teach? You're, you're in um, I teach, yeah, I teach a secondary. Okay. So our high school, um, it's called career technical ed uh, engineering class. Um, okay. But I do teach at a pretty flexible charter school. Um, so we've adapted, so we're trying to adapt some of the more um, rigid uh you know kind of ways to teach engineering with you know it being in a maker space and trying to use like accessible pathways like sewing um and it's high schoolers so yeah this i said in the beginning this is like a module that this year took me you know four weeks um maybe a little bit more than that to be honest um because of holidays and me getting covid in the middle of it um and uh but yeah it's in a two semester course I think it's an amazing There's another work. hand too. Uh, I have one more oh, question. Oh, more questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, how do boys react to this um, theme? <laughs> if I can yeah. call it. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Um, the boys, the students themselves, nine times out of 10 love it. And actually are sometimes even more excited. I had a student this year who, who says, my mom and my sisters and my aunts would not let me near the sewing machine because they use it for work, you know, at home. Um, and because they won't, they say it's not my job to learn this. And they were really excited to get their hands on the sewing machine. Um, and then also, especially, uh, and I hate to generalize the, the, you know, the male identifying students are less afraid of the sewing machine um, than some of the girls that might have not done it. Um, in that they're like, oh, you know, it makes noise and they love it. Um, the only folks that question it on that level, Alessandra, is I've had parents, especially fathers, say, why is my son in an engine, you know, in a in a makerspace engineering class learning sewing? 
Yeah. And, you know, I basically try to give the condensed version of this. Um, and also that, I remember that kid, he was like the most into it. And I was, I was bummed that, you know, so that's where we're at. But yes, I think the good news is, is, you know, they start fresh. <laughs> when they're born, they don't get all those gender norms. Um, and, you know, if you make it fun, especially like, and the projects are not, you know, like even the monster, the boys love doing a monster, right? Um, that they, they don't feel like they're gonna get, you know, outed. They're making bean bags that they turn into like uh they like throwing things, but also with a with the feet. What do you call that? And you you, you kick the bean bags with your feet. <laughs> Mateo gave you a picture. I'm not sure if I can in the time because we I think we have like 30 seconds. Happy sack, thank you, Takeo. This is often what happens in class. Um, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yes, and I'm looking at what people are writing on slide 26. Part of why I'm taking the community college class is I'm thinking about, uh, I think pattern creation and adaption is, you know, is much more technical and quantitative. And that might answer some of the, pushback that I'm getting that the sewing isn't, you know, engineering enough. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, I also in the past have told a case study around um, Lockheed Martin, which I did a, I was great to do a fellowship there. And I know we're probably out of time, Leslie, you know, we're going to pull this out eventually, but I'll just keep talking till they do. Yeah. I was going to say, um, just keep talking until they pull us out. <laughs> the conversation is going really well. Um, but yes, and then also, yeah, this also happens is that Miss D has a, I talked about myself, boys like it. Oh, yes, Mateo. I'm going to keep these pictures. I, I like, how do I download them before? Because um, that's the other thing is I tell that story about every kid's doing uh, sewing, but I almost never have like a camera when that happens and I can't capture that moment when all those kids' heads are down. Um, so but William I love send pictures. Medjool also um, raised his hand. I okay. Just, I just want to applaud everything you're doing. Um, Thank the, you. The sewing as a as an engineering skill. I one of my in, industrial contacts here. They make airbags, and it was all about sewing. Uh, and there's nothing more automotive engineering and, as pardon the word, macho than automotive engineering. And you know when we start talking about making airbags and or seat covers, the the whole seat arrangement and all the rest of it. And you start thinking about all of that sort of stuff. There's a there's a a piece of sewing which is that, and then there's the mm -hmm. second part of it, designing clothing so it'll stand properly. Yes, one of the hardest sewing that. cases. Yes, yeah. You know, the, the, we we don't have analytical tools that will allow us to do that. So you need to be able to do some pretty spectacular mechanical engineering to make clothing do what you want it to do. Uh, so it's lots of answers for that guy who's got a problem with his kid learning to sew. <laughs> yeah, I was about to finish a story too, William. Thanks for saying that. Give me that's why I love these things. Um, is that that time at Lucky Martin? I went on a tour with the VP of the you know aeronautics, and uh, we went through where they were like working on um, you know some of the like they were working on like Mars rover stuff, you know, and satellite stuff. And there was a sewing machine, like an industrial sewing machine sitting there. And I asked him, I was like, why is there a sewing machine here? And he's like, oh my God, you want to know about that? And, and then he actually called me into his office later and gave me a bunch of materials. And he said, one of my things, because he was an engineer that kind of worked up in the ranks. And he said, I had to figure out how to create the like parachutes for when, you know, and I had to start working with this crew of women in Texas that worked in our, you know, sewing lab that were sewing these things. And, you know, and like, they just thought about problems a totally different way. And they had to teach me how to use a sewing machine. And there I am, you know, this like highfalutin, you know, aeronautics engineer. And I'm like sitting there with this, you know, you know, woman, you know, like learning, you know, and, and they knew how to fix things better than I did. And I'm like, I wish I could have captured what he said, like, you know, because it was just so powerful. Cause he was just like, you know, and he's like, I'm bummed because that lab doesn't exist anymore, right? Within Lockheed Martin, we outsource it. He's like, but that was so as me, someone, because he had to go back and like 
you know, design what that parachute looked like, him spending that time with them understanding the construction of that and how to put it together was so valuable, right? To, uh, to be, for him to have that hands-on experience for him to then go design it. Um, and so, yeah, fabric is a material in a lot of things. <laughs> I agree. And, and um, coming back, and he, to, coming back yeah. to that, that airbag, airbag story, same idea, introducing geometry. So deployable geometry, whether it's a parachute or an airbag, and then it's all about where the seams are, how the seams direct the energy through your system. So mm. how are you going to actually get the airbag to explode into exactly the right place when your steering wheel has changed shape and you no longer have, say, a circular steering wheel? Now what do you do? Because cars have got all kinds of wheels in them now. Or if you're going to put an airbag between two people's heads in the back of the car, how do you fill that space? It's all about directing force down your fabric. There's all kinds of pieces there. <clears throat> yes. Oh, we're getting the hook. Here we got yeah, the word. We got to go. We got 57 <laughs> seconds. Thank you all. I'm going to like try as quickly as possible before I lose. Like all you guys sharing these awesome pictures and stuff. Um, But my contact information is in the slides. In the beginning there um you know please if you try this stuff you know let me know um let, you know and tell me it is terrible misty never use that ed puzzle again um you know i would love that kind of feedback too but yeah but like you know let me know how the sewing goes keep it live <laughs>